Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing all of the updated graphics and performance settings for Sim Update 9. If you think that interests you, stay tuned for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers! Welcome back everyone, so before we get into this, let's go over what you can expect in today's video. First we're going to go over the NVIDIA control panel and all the different options that you can set inside of there. I'm not just going to be going over my settings, but also some recommended settings for other various systems. Once we finish up with that, we're going to hop into the config menu for Microsoft Flight Simulator and go through all the different options with inside of there. Don't worry if you're not sure how to get there, we'll go over that. If you are a VR user, we are going to go over all those settings inside of the config menu as well. Lastly, we're going to jump into the Microsoft Flight Sim settings and then go over all of the PC and VR settings in there. If anybody has any questions along the way, please post those down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. If this video does help you out today, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. Right. So before we get started with the NVIDIA control panel settings, if you are an NVIDIA graphics card user, down below in the description, I have a link for a part two video, as well as up here in the top right. In this part two video, I will go over and discuss how you can unlock another 30 to 40% more performance out of this simulator. Well, let's get into this now, and when you click on the NVIDIA control panel, you're probably not going to be on this particular screen. To get to the Manage 3D Settings menu, you just want to click on the Manage 3D Settings tab here. At the very top, we have two different tabs. We have either Global Settings or Program Settings. What this is going to allow us to do is to set a variety of settings that we want to use for everyday use, and we can set another set of settings for any particular program once that is in use. Now that's what I recommend to do with Microsoft Flight Simulator is to set up a completely separate profile. So to do that, you're gonna click on Program Settings and then we're gonna go down to Select Program to Customize. You're gonna click on the dropdown and find Microsoft Flight Simulator. To make your life a little bit easier, you can tick on the box below it to show only programs found on your computer. Once you select Microsoft Flight Simulator, at that point, we can now start adjusting all the settings down below. Again, we're gonna go through some of these. I'll explain what some of them mean, and then I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on other settings if you have different processors. First one down, we have the anisotropic filtering. We're gonna leave that one on application controlled. Below that, we have the anti-aliasing FXAA. You really wanna make sure that this is off. This will really give you an FPS hit. Below that, we have the anti-aliasing gamma correction, this is going to help with some color correcting inside of the sim. I have tested this on and off, and I found that on gave me much better colors. Below that, we have the anti-aliasing mode. We're going to leave that in application controlled. The last anti-aliasing option we have is the transparency, and we're just going to make sure that is ticked off. So the next one down we have is background application max frame rate. What this is going to allow us to do is to set a max frame rate of any other applications that may be running in the background. For those of you who are running a lower to mid tier PC, this may help save some FPS on those applications and give a little bit more performance inside of Microsoft Flight Sim. So if you'd like, you can come down and turn this on and just set this to 30 FPS this way, it will run all of your background applications at 30 frames instead of the native frame rate of that monitor. Below that, we have the CUDA GPUs, and I recommend to go in here and just select the GPU that you're using, hit OK, and then we can move down to the next option. All right, so low latency mode. This is another topic of discussion here, and I'm going to go over two different scenarios for everyone. I've done extensive testing with low latency mode, and... Here are my findings. If you are a user of Microsoft Flight Sim and are only using it for PC, not VR, then what I have found is by turning this into ultra low latency mode will give you more FPS and a smoother gameplay. But, here's the big but. If you ever intend on flying in VR, having this in ultra can induce some micro stutters. So, if you're in VR, I would recommend to turn it off. 
If you're in PC, I would recommend to turn it on. Below that, we have the max frame rate, and here we can set a max frame rate for Microsoft Flight Simulator directly. For this, I just leave it off at the moment, and I don't really see any need of using this. Even with VR, really have no issues with this in the off position. Below that, we have the OpenGL Rendering GPU. Again, you just want to go in and select the GPU that you're using. Below that, we have the Power Management Mode, and I suggest to use the Prefer Maximum Performance. This will make sure that you're going to be running at the maximum performance of the GPU at all times. And this way it won't throttle the GPU down during the sim session and then say you run through some clouds and then it needs more power. Well, you could get a stutter there when it tries to ramp back up again. Below that we have the preferred refresh rate and again I would leave this in application controlled. Now we get into some of the texture filtering options. And some people may be confused with how to set these and what these are going to do, so let's explain this real quick. The first one I want to talk about, I'm going out of order here, is we're going to talk about the texture filtering quality option. To the right of that, we have several different options here in the drop down menu, and I'm going to explain what these actually do. Absolutely nothing. When we click on either high quality or high performance, the only thing that this is going to be changing is the texture filtering options that are here. If you just highlight over the texture filtering quality and read down in the description, it says here that the NVIDIA control panel will make all of the appropriate texture filtering adjustments based on your preference. So depending on what you set this to, it will adjust some of these other texture filtering options. We can go ahead and set these manually. So now you understand what that does, let's go through these one by one. Texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization. This is going to help eliminate shimmering objects or glistening things inside of the sim. I recommend to turn this off and by default it already is off. If you would like to get a little bit more performance, you can turn this on and it will give you a slight performance increase. For those of you who are using a lower end PC, that may really help you out a little bit by doing that and turning this in the on position. Below that, we have the texture filtering negative LOD bias. In the drop down menu, we have two options, either allow or clamp, and the allow is the default option. So what this is gonna do is allow sharpening to stationary objects. The problem with that is, if you are moving past those objects, it can now induce aliasing on those particular objects for instance, clouds. So as you're flying past the cloud, it's gonna to try to sharpen that up for you, but then it can induce some aliasing or pixelization. So by turning this to clamp, it will not allow that extra sharpening to take effect, thus eliminating or trying to eliminate any of the aliasing or pixelization. Below that, we have the texture filtering trilinear optimization and by default, this is on, and I recommend to leave that on. Below that, we have threaded optimization. We can leave that in the auto position. And below that, we have triple buffering, and I believe the default, yep, it is off, and we wanna make sure that stays off. Anytime you're gonna triple buffer something, it's gonna induce lag, latency, and that's not really what we want inside of the simulator. Below that, we have the vertical sync option. And here's another one of those options that can really play havoc with certain systems. For those of you who are noticing screen tearing, like the top half and the bottom half of your screen, you get a big tear mark between the two when you turn around in the cockpit. This setting is what's going to help rectify that problem. So if you click on the drop down, we have many different options here that we can choose from, and you may be confused as to what to pick. So let's talk about this. If you are using an i7 processor or lower, what I recommend to do here is to turn the vertical sync into fast, and then inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator, you wanna come in here and turn your V-Sync into off. So what that's gonna do is allow the NVIDIA control panel to control your V-Sync and not Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now for some reason, if you turn it to this setting and find, hey, I'm getting that screen tearing that you were just talking about. We're gonna talk about the alternate V-Sync option that I would recommend. This is also gonna apply for anybody using an i9 processor or higher. So what we would wanna do in this situation is to come back into V-Sync, 
turn this into application setting, and then go into your Microsoft Flight Sim settings and turn your VSync on. You can set it on 60 FPS. Even if you're not getting 60 FPS, it really doesn't matter. It should eliminate any of the screen tearing. And again, if anybody has any questions about this particular setting, just post those down below in the comments and I'll get right back to you. Below that, the last and final setting that we have here is the virtual reality pre-rendered frames. Here is another questionable setting. And again, I have done extensive testing here and I have found that using anything over one introduce some micro stutters inside of the sim. I think it may have induced some lag or latency issues, but when I switch it back to one, I seem to not have those problems. So in my recommendation, I would just leave this set on one. Once you set all of these settings up to the way you want them, just come down, hit apply. It will apply all those settings to the NVIDIA control panel. All right, so now that we've finished up with the control panel, let's talk about the config settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I found the easiest way to get to that config menu or the config file is through the community folder address bar here at the top. Now, if you don't have a community folder shortcut or are unsure of how to get to your community folder, down here in the lower right hand corner, I will post your location if you are on PC. And if you are in the Steam version, I will post your location down here in the lower left hand corner. If you have done a custom install, of course, I can't tell you where to get that. Only you would know that information. So once you get up your community folder at the very top at the address bar, we want to go all the way back to the local cache option. We're going to click on that. And when we do, we can find the user config all the way at the bottom of this menu. We're going to left click on that to highlight, and then we're going to right click on it to open with Notepad. I'm using Notepad++. If you're opening this for the first time, yes, it can look a little bit daunting, but most of these settings are actually going to be able to be adjusted inside of the Microsoft Flight Sim graphics settings. There's only a couple on here that we're going to change, and we're going to go through that and show you how to do that. Within the config settings, we have two different sections. We have the PC section. We also have the VR section. Let's go through the PC settings. The first setting at the very top here is the ray tracing option. This is set to off by default. And how you know this is off is you're going to have a zero. So a zero is going to equal off and a one is going to equal on. I know in previous updates of the sim that turning ray tracing on did help with the graphics. I'm not sure if it does anymore, but I still like to go back in here and make sure this is turned on. Then what we can do is scroll all the way to the bottom as all of these settings are going to be adjusted and controlled within Microsoft Flight Simulator directly. So we're going to scroll all the way down to the post process options and keep in mind that none of these particular settings can be adjusted within Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're going to go over some of the most important ones and whether you may or may not want to turn them on or off. So the first one I think is one of the most important is the color grading option. If you feel that the sim is a little bit oversaturated for your liking, then what you want to do is to make sure that you come in and turn color grading off. To do that, you would just go ahead and delete the one and put a zero in its place. Below that, we have the sharpening option. And if you're noticing some aliasing on objects or jagged edges, then you may benefit by coming in here and turning the sharpening off. Again, to do that, we're just going to delete the one, put a zero, and that should eliminate that over sharpening effect that the post processing is adding. The next one that I want to turn off is film grain. What I have found in the past that this has introduced some aliasing, pixelization, and as well as some graininess while you're way up in the sky looking at the ground. So what I would recommend here, again, you can play with this, but turn film grain off by just deleting the one and hitting zero. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of it for PC. Let's hop down to the VR graphics settings. So we're just gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says post process. Now, if you've been living under a rock for the past six months and are unaware of the OpenXR toolkit, I'll post a link down below in the description on how to get it and set this up for yourselves. For those of you who are using the OpenXR toolkit, you will know that in the new version, we now have a post process option. So if you're gonna be using the post processing in the OpenXR toolkit, 
you want to make sure that you come in here and turn every post-processing option off in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Even if you aren't using the post-processing options in the OpenXR Toolkit, I would still highly recommend to come in here and turn all of these off. Once you've made all of the changes inside of the config file, then you want to come up here to the file tab, scroll down and hit the save button. Once you have done that, we can exit out of that program. All right, so now that we've finished up with the config file, let's jump into Microsoft Flight Sim and talk about some of the graphics settings here. We're not gonna go through each of these individually, but if you do have a question, please post it down below in the comments and I'll get right back to you on that. So I think the number one issue with FPS limiting factors are the CPU or the main thread. If you find that in your FPS counter that you are limited by your main thread all the time, the number one factor that goes into that is your terrain level of detail. Now, I only tell you this if your FPS is below 30 FPS for your total FPS up here. Keep in mind that you will always be limited by something. Your PC and GPU can only go so fast and produce so much FPS. So as you can see here, I'm limited by my GPU, and that's not because of the GPU, that's because I am limiting the GPU with my VSync. So just because this says it's limited by something, if you've got good FPS, you don't need to worry about anything. But if you have lower than 30 FPS and you're limited by your main thread, come in here and turn down the terrain level of detail, and that will greatly improve your FPS. Anyway, let's scroll down the list here and you can take a look at some of the other options. As we're scrolling through these, some of you may have noticed that my texture resolution is not set to ultra. This is going to parlay us into the graphic settings for VR. I'm gonna to explain to you why I have my texture resolution into high, but if you are solely a PC user and do not use VR, you can set your texture resolution to ultra, and you won't have any problem. But for those of you who are using VR, then here's why you do not wanna set your texture resolution to ultra, and you wanna set your texture resolution in your PC to whatever texture resolution you have set in VR. So if you have your texture resolution on medium in VR, then you wanna make sure that your texture resolution in PC is set to medium. Now I'm gonna to explain to you why you would wanna do that. And for anybody that has tried to come in here and change your texture resolution and hit apply and save, what do we get on the screen? You must restart the flight simulator before the changes can take effect. So what does that mean for you? Well, if you spawn into the sim in PC version, it's gonna set your texture resolution to ultra. If at that point you decide, well, I'm now gonna switch over into VR, the problem here is the texture resolution that you have set for VR will not take effect for your VR, and it's gonna continue using the ultra settings because the only way to change the texture resolution is to restart the flight simulator for them to take effect. This way, when you spawn into the sim in PC and switch over to VR, it's going to continue using that same texture resolution when you swap over. I know that's a lot for everybody and I hope I explained that well. If you have any questions, please post those down below in the comments section. So now I'm gonna go over all the VR settings for the sim. And again, I'm just gonna brush over these. If you have a question, post that down below. One of the settings that I do really wanna to talk to you about is the volumetric clouds. If you are noticing while you were flying that, let's say you have pretty decent FPS, but you are noticing a lot of stuttering, especially if you're actually flying through a cloud, the best option to do to help eliminate stuttering is to just turn your volumetric clouds from high to medium. I know it's really gonna be 
a pain to turn it from high to medium because high really gives you so much better visuals but i will tell you that by turning it down to medium will greatly improve your fps and not only that but the smoothness of the simulator the other option i wanted to talk about was the texture sampling and i leave that off i have found no difference whether i turn texture sampling on or off it made no difference the other thing i did was turn the bloom off because that can create some issues with uh, haziness that i found on my headset so if you are getting that and you're getting some haziness on your vr set turn the bloom off and that'll help you out there okay so that takes care of all of my vr settings for microsoft flight simulator don't forget to go down below and check out the video i have posted down there to gain another 30 to 40 percent more performance inside a Microsoft Flight Simulator if you are using an NVIDIA graphics card. If anybody has any questions throughout the video today, post those down below in the comments and I will get right back to you. Thanks everybody for joining us on the channel today. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.